Well, you gotta have a cup of coffee first. Everything's better with coffee mm -hmm. and butter and gravy. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. We're gonna get ready and make us a chicken pot pie. Or, let me correct that. A smoked chicken pot pie. Because we made some awesome smoked chicken. And we're gonna make it in a cast iron skillet. Alright. I'm gonna be making the homemade pie crust for the smoked chicken pot pie. It's gonna use two cups of flour, two to four tablespoons of ice water, one stick of frozen butter, and we keep butter in the freezer, some of it at all times for recipes like this. One tablespoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, and then I'll pulse it in the blender, and then we'll lay wax paper down and start rolling it out from there. All right, be back shortly. Here's your tablespoon of sugar. Here's Bam. the mixer. There's one cup all-purpose flour. I need my teaspoon of salt. I got your teaspoon and salt right here. Teaspoon. Salt. And I'm gonna need one more cup of the all-purpose flour. tablespoons of ice water. Then I'll take it over here to the blender and pulse it on up. And then look to see if you need to add a little more flour. And then see from there. Crumbly enough? Well, it's basically all crumbly. Don't do too much water. It'll be too moist. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you're the one rolling out the dough. Who's the pie crust maker here, me or you? You are. I don't want to do Edges, nice and flaky. It will be. This is a flaky pie See crust recipe. Yeah, there we go. All right, I'm going to get it spread out on here, resituate the camera. All right, now that I've got it dumped out on here, I'm going to kind of scoop it all up, make a bit of a ball out of it, and then start to roll it out. doing a top and bottom break it off into two pieces. 
Dang. The top one's going to be a little bit smaller than the bottom one. The bottom one's going to have to come up the size of a cast iron pan. So the top ball, I mean the bottom ball, will be a little bit bigger. Not by a whole lot, as you can see, but bigger than the top that will make the crust on top. I might have you cut out some pretty leaf patterns. I have a cutter. It's cute. Mm -hmm. Oops. All right. A little bit of flour. This will help keep it from sticking to the rolling pin. And And like my wife said, everything's better with coffee. Mm. I got a star and a leaf. Okay. So we'll do a little pretty design on the top of it. Who don't have the inserts? Maybe my my awesome husband can make them for it. Who's this awesome husband you keep talking about? The hasty person ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't let him be catching around here. I'll run him off. Be ready. This wax paper I'm going to slide around an awful lot. Well, we could have done saran wrap. Yeah, I think I have I some more. Like Be the parchment paper. No, it's the wax paper. Hmm. Well, it's usually better for it not sticking that way. Yeah. I think we're going to have extra chicken. Oh, yeah. And not to mention, we got about five more pounds of that chicken. Out there on the smoker. Well, I might make one to go in the freezer. If you fill up to make it another pie crust after that. So we'll have one that we can just pull out and heat up. Did I put them in your way? Well, as the pie crust grows. I need more room. <laughs> Alright, we're going to pin again. It's starting to stick just a little bit. Alright, we're going to pin again. It's starting to stick just a little bit. And yes, we washed our hands and all before we started doing all this. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm over here picking my nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch out, you can have some people put on a feel about that. <laughs> <That'll work. laughs> That's all right. Now 
Now, if there's any recipes any of y'all would like to see, make a comment about them, and we'll see what we can come up with, uh, depending on whether or not it's something that we would actually eat. <laughs> we sure like those a lot of stuff. Yeah. We changed the way we eat. Well, we changed back to include a lot of stuff because since meat prices and stuff have gone up, we uh, we had to change our diet from being primarily meat to include other things, more vegetables and stuff again. Yeah, beginning of the year, we'll probably do keto again. Yeah. Keto bore because you're more carnivore than you were. Oh yeah, well I, I prefer, I've always preferred eating meat over anything else. And hopefully the chickens will be producing good by then so we can start getting eggs on a regular basis again. We get several that are molten. Well, those little ones should be starting to lay soon, right? Yes, they should. And if things go good, we'll be able to hatch out more next spring. We'll save some eggs to hatch out, like we used to do. Mm -hmm. and I like our mixture we got. Yep. Some of them are so pretty. Our barnyard nuts, as yeah. some people would refer to them. Yeah. It's all right. I like our barnyard nuts. Those are some big chicken breasts. They made this whole bowl full. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because you're going to remember most production chickens from Cornish Cross. Remember those we raised up? Yeah, that was the first video I put on my channel was when we got those new chicks all the yeah. way back when we lived over in Auburn. I thought you took it off. No, I just made it where it was private. Well, because I started trying to focus on the forge, and then when my health got bad last year, yeah. you know, seems like everything happened all at once. Well, one right after another, I should say, not all at once. Uh-huh. It's easier to keep it cleaned up as we go. Yes, it is. So, after we're done making yummy food, I don't like to stand here and clean dishes on that. That's one of the things that you want to make sure that you keep going so that it doesn't stick. Now, if you ever go to make flaky layer biscuits from scratch, you would mix up your biscuit dough, roll it out thin, lightly dust it with flour, and fold it back over, and roll it out, and keep doing that to get as many layers as you wanted. which is the way I like to make biscuits. My lovely wife over there likes to make those two ingredient biscuits that are just fluffy and taste good. Yeah, maybe one of these days we'll make a video for that too. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be pretty popular right now. Everybody's yeah. making that video. That's what I was going to say. Everybody's making the two, two ingredient biscuits. I may make my never fail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, show them how to make it where it's regular. Uh, you should probably give and credit where we got this recipe from. This recipe we're using. It's Food Wishes Flaky Crust. And it's supposed to make a top and bottom. All right, now that I got this one made out, we're going to size it in the pan. And then I will roll out the top one and come back. But I'm not going to make you watch me roll out the top one. Yes, Mr. Where'd you go? Got to butter up a pan. Make it pertinent. Quick and easy way to butter it up. Alright. Pause. Alright, here's the 
top layer that will be going on the pie. Cut out the little leaves. We'll decorate them in here. And then we'll do a little egg bake over the top that we're going to be moving to starting to make my wife will make the roux that will turn into the gravy and I'll show you what we're going to be using for the ingredients. We got butter, a quarter cup flour, I'm going to use a little bit of salt. And we're going to use the juice out of our home canned soup base. And a cup of milk. And the soup base is potatoes, carrots, onions, and celery. And then we will also toss in, oh, I just made a mess, <laughs> uh, one store bought mixed vegetable can. See, there, we got bloopers. <laughs> All right, and this is the, uh, she cut up the smoked chicken while I was rolling out the, the pie crust. This will be the pan we're going to do the roux in. And over here is the bottom pie crust. And we'll be back. Uh, well, actually, well, I can go ahead and get set up so my wife can make the roux and you can watch how she does that. How much butter? Four tablespoons. I got six here, so I'm going to cut a little off. And I like to just chop it up into some chunks and throw it in there. And we'll get that all melted up. The awesome thing about cast iron, you can use metal in it. Mm -hmm. Not have to worry about skinning up the lining. Yes, I like to use a fork for this. You get our butter all melted up. And I'm going to throw a little bit of salt and pepper in it. Not a lot. Yeah, tend to salt and pepper to taste. Alright, I think that's good where I can start adding. I'm just going to grab a little pinch of salt and my hot butter. Pepper. Just to heat down. Slowly sprinkle our powder, our flour, into our butter. And this is how you make a roux, because you don't want your your gravy to have a flour taste. So if you cook your flour and butter together first, it gets rid of that and you won't be making paste. See how it thickens up? Somebody told me a long time ago the best gravies is with the burnt flour. And I was like, burnt flour? Ain't that going to taste horrible? <laughs> it's not really burnt. It's just, it's really cooked until it gets to a... What was it, Lady like, Homesteader said? She said, when it a gets nutty that, smell. Yeah, which is actually the butter cooking. Mm -hmm. It's the same smell that the butter gets when you make beef. Mm-hmm. But still, you want to make sure it, it cooks a good amount. And we might add a little more flour. I don't know yet. Show you that color. Yeah. What I'm going to add... Kind of a golden, like you would see on the top of a biscuit when it's ready. It's not as thick as I want, so I'm going to add... A little bit more flour. A little bit more flour. Maybe... Total will probably be using half a cup of flour because mm -hmm. I want it to be more of a thicker gravy. Well, we still got to add the broth from the vegetables. Yes. When I say broth. To me, when I think of broth, I think of meat. <laughs> All right. I'm going to add a little bit of milk. Make sure you mix it up as you go. Hot on the fingers. Mm hmm. Steam coming off that milk. And I'm making a mess. I'm 
This is when a fork comes in handy. Breaking down those clumps. Yeah. And they will cook down. It won't be all lumpy lumpy. You can see them already. But it won't have that floury taste either. starting to thick up. So time they got that broth. Yes. And I'm using this is our home can soup base. I explained it. Alright, well I'm gonna start off with about I don't know about that much. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but kinda like well, kinda like she said. Mama, don't measure. <laughs> That's right. I mean, That's I, I do it by eyeball. And you see it starts breaking down their pumps. But that adds that all the good nutrition that's in that broth in it. Although it didn't look like I hardly added any pepper. And I know I did. I can always salt and pepper mine afterwards. Mm -hmm. I need a spoon. Yeah, put a little bit on. Before I add other. Where you add more of the broth and all to it. Yep. Yeah, because it's really more like a <laughs> thicker, like a gravy, gravy. <laughs> now we don't want it too thick, but we don't want it super runny when we put it in the pie pan and cook it up. Yeah. what we use that or sea salt. Yeah, it really needed more salt. And I have this all the way on low. which I'm going to add the vegetables too, but the reason I'm doing the chicken is because I didn't use chicken broth. So you so, can get a little bit of cooked chicken flavor in there? Yes. Plus we seasoned the chicken when we smoked it. Yeah. I just a little bit of garlic, salt, pepper and stuff. Alright. I'm going to drain some of this into this cup because I don't want all that liquid. I'm going to add the vegetables first and see if it needs more liquid. Yeah. I'll add the potatoes and the 
celery, carrots, and onions. There you go. Thank you. And I'm hoping this won't be too much for that pie crust. Well. Like I said, I knew we were going to have leftover chicken. <coughs> yeah. I'd rather have leftovers than not enough. Yeah. And see, once I mix in these vegetables, if it still looks too thick, I have the leftover juice from mm -hmm. the can of mixed vegetables. Starting to look like pot pie mix. Getting there. Alright, now we'll add the the store-bought stuff. Oh, it doesn't have a lot of carrots in it. Mm -hmm. I might do a little bit more of that juice just because I know it will still thicken up some more yes. as it cooks in the oven. green beans. There were some in that mixed can. It didn't look like it. It looked like it was half a can of carrots. Mm -hmm. But that's what happens when you buy stuff in the store. I don't know what brand that is. Where did it come from? It's the Happy Harvest. That's from Aldi's. Probably. And we are not affiliated with any of these companies, businesses, or anything like that. The only thing I'm affiliated with is we're consultants for Thrive Life. Uh, long-term shelf storage foods which we could have added some of that stuff in here but yeah. I don't have any of it open right now except apples <laughs> so <laughs> which make for a great treat oh honey what do you think is that a good thickness for you yeah I think it's looking good once it cooks and then cools down some, it'll it'll thicken up a little bit. It'll be nice. I think this will fit inside there. That's the great thing about cooking in cast iron, especially when you got two the same size. Because mm -hmm. I know all this is going to fit in that. Set this back over here again. And now just back up a little bit. This into our pot crust. Um, There's my ladle. Um, Hopefully there they can are. see all that. Oh yeah. Ooh, you need that over there so they don't fall in there. I don't know how much chicken we actually use. Maybe a large chicken breast. I cut up. Two and a half, and you got at least one and a half left. Yeah, so that's about what I put in it. All right, that ought to make a nice pie. I think so. Spread our crust out, our stuff out a little bit, our filling. I'm gonna set this over here on a trivet. I'm gonna come out over of the way. Pretty good. I'm going to stay on myself. <laughs> <laughs> and the only juice I didn't use is about a fourth of a cup of the juice out of this can. Alright. Now, I will move this pan over here and bring the crust over. Alright, I didn't get quite centered on there, but now what I'm going to do is just come through here and run around the edge of this pan and cut off the excess. Yes, tell them they're going to be in for a special treat afterwards. Yep. We're going to show them what's going on. Stacy's mom, when she was a kid, used to take the excess pie crust that was trimmed off and make pie crust cookies. So we're going to do a few of those. 
out of this excess that we're trimming off. Because uh, there's a whole lot. <laughs> no, not a whole, whole lot. But it'll make some little cookies. Yep. Roll it up. Matter of fact, we'll probably even use a little leaf cutter or something to, to shape it. I know my arm's all up in the way right now. Yeah, I can't tell. Oh, I can. <laughs> all right. Now. Take our egg. You don't want to do the egg, you want to take do the edges. Yes, well, and on the back of these little leaves, take a little bit of it. Paint it on the back so it'll stick good. school run around the edge with a fork to press it together nothing fancy I know that's kind of messed up after I went through the process of doing a little leaves and all <laughs> we don't do an ugly plain old fork Hey, that makes it look like a pot pie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a giant pot pie. It's a beautiful. There we go. Now you can do your egg wash. Now we'll take and do a light egg wash. We should have had our oven preheating already. I have to wash those. Get egg yolk all yes, my uh, that and flour. Here, I got a towel. Always have a kitchen towel handy. You, know, you can wait till I'm through so we're not reaching in front of the video. Yeah, that's true. Hey, we're learning to do this cooking thing. I've been doing forge videos for a while, but well, haven't done any in a while. But <laughs> That's the reason why we branched out the channel to include the homesteading. Because I don't know if y'all can hear me, and I'm already having problems breathing again. And when he starts having the problems breathing, he's done. Yeah. It just, it, it takes the energy right out of me. So. Alright, just a simple egg wash. Like that. You can take this and wipe off that and get the temperature set. Oh, I already had the temperature set. Oh, okay. All right, we will. Uh, we will be back in about an hour. Yep. We're gonna stick this in the oven, and then afterwards we'll show you the uh, the little cookies we'll make as well. Okay, we've got that in the oven. So now we're gonna take this leftover pie crust. Come on. Just basically, how thick you want these, honey? Uh, quarter inch, probably. Okay. Thick the little does. Yeah, with this one, I can press it on out for the most part with the hand. Nothing super fancy. Mm. 
Take our little cutter. Push your little button in the center. Mm -hmm. That's how you, mm. how you get them out. Eject. That's that ain't cute. Stick it over here on this cookie sheet. Really, we could have lined more of the pie with them, but I like my pie crust cookies. <laughs> I know. Every time we make a pie, it's something you look forward to. It is. Now, my mom used to just cut them in some strips, but yeah. I like these new little cutters they've come out with. Just push a little button, they eject. And they have different shapes. Yeah, they, well, we you got can a, do a star. We got a star over here. We got leaves, but my wife is partial to trees and leaves. I do like trees and leaves. That and apples. Yes. Our kitchen is decorated with apples. <laughs> well, since we do a lot of home canning, mason jars is a given. Yeah. All right. Take this. Roll it back up. Let's see how many we can get out of it. Let's pick up some of this flour. It's like playing with Play-Doh. Yeah, except this tastes a whole lot better when you eat it. That's for sure. <laughs> Just do this until you end up with where you can't make any more. And the last one will be on an oddball if it, it doesn't might. make a leaf. It might. It might be able to get it to where it's close to a leaf. Well, that one's going to be a little thick cookie. Yeah, it'll be all right. That one didn't quite make it all the way. Yeah, we can always press this up some and do this. Press it on out to where it fills it. And there's still a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the rest. Yeah. Get pressed back up in there a little bit. So. There, basic cookie shapes. It works. Now, where's your seasoning going? I thought you might want to put a little bit of the egg wash. Yes, I was thinking about that too. And then this is cinnamon and sugar mixed together. Yeah, let's slide this on out the way. Slide this over so they can see. And you can see they're not perfect or anything. But that's part of the thing about them. They're just, it's a treat and it's fun and it brings back childhood memories for my wife. Good memories, good times is always a good thing.
Right. Now this is cinnamon and sugar. You want to hand me a towel? Mm -hmm. I had your apron. You didn't put it on. Cinnamon and sugar. Dust them real good. Because this is where your sweet's going to come from on these. Because uh, pie crust is not sweet. <laughs> nope. Now we'll wait. There it is. When you set a timer on uh, my phone for like 10 minutes, yeah. it might not even take that long. All right, we got pot pie and the cookies in the oven. Got a timer going for the pot pie and a separate timer for the cookies so we can pull them out when they're done and let the pot pie finish. Told you, decorated in apples. <laughs> I'll break this one open. They're pretty hot. Ooh, look mm -hmm. at that. Yeah, I ain't biting into that just yet. I'll let it go down. Mm. Hot, hot, hot. Mm. Now, because she's a looking pretty and she's a bubbling away. Look at that. Look at that gorgeous. And we're going to get it up here on the stove top. Ooh, that sucker's hot. And we did that for uh, 350 for 40 minutes. Yes. Now we're going to let it cool down some before we cut her open. At least right. let it start bubbling. Yep. I like them pretty leaves. It looks good to me. <laughs> I'm just loosening up the edges just cause. Mm-hmm. Just cause I want to. Keeps the fruit in me. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna cut right down the center. I'm hoping that bottom pie crust is nice. Cause that's the best part of a pot pie. In my opinion. Mm -hmm. Best part to me is the feeling. <laughs> See if I can't ladle this up without making a mess. We'll see. I don't know. I might need to get a spoon. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, look at the pretty crust. You want to hand me that fork from over there? Mm -hmm. No, I want to cut another piece. I want to taste that sucker. Well, you got away with it. Mm-hmm. I'm glad it didn't stick. It's nice. Oh, yeah. Buttering up that frying pan works real good. It does. Although, I don't think I got that side cut good. Oh, that's all right. There's my pie crust. And we're going to throw a little more of this on top. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to move my knife. And throw a little more of this on top of this. One. That's all the filling that goes in that next piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's your fork. Look at that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Of course, I have to grab a piece of chicken. Mm. That's really good. 
All right. We hope you enjoy. Look forward to y'all checking out more of our videos. Have a blessed day. Bye. Go eat dinner.